station that's on your side. Breaking news. Well, live at five, we're tracking a tropical storm that's expected to grow into a hurricane soon. Our first alert weather team is tracking Adalia as we speak. And we go now to first alert chief meteorologist Riley Hill. And Riley, what can we expect from this storm over the next few days? Yeah, well, it looks like this storm is going to bring us some pretty big impact, especially in the southeastern CS array, at least in the way of some very heavy rainfall. I'd imagine that's going to be the biggest impact we see from this system here locally. Here's a live look at it. It is uh, continuing to strengthen. I would not be surprised if we do see this become a uh, hurricane later tonight with the evening updates that will come in at 8 p.m. They just put out the 5 p.m. update, did keep it out of tropical storm. But here's the latest cone of uncertainty. So expecting landfall most likely early Wednesday morning as a major hurricane, and then as soon as this storm gets over land it'll weaken rapidly we're not really expecting much in the way of very strong wind gusts here locally from this storm but since that center is going to make a close pass near that georgia and carolina coastline that is going to put us in a place to where we could see some very heavy rainfall here's a current look at tropical alerts across the region so you can see uh, right around cuba the yucatan peninsula they do have hurricane warnings watches and then across the peninsula of florida hurricane warnings in effect there and then tropical storm watches in effect on the atlantic side of florida all the way up to Georgia. So we are expecting some impacts from this. Right now we do have a first alert in effect Wednesday for areas highlighted in red. So that is Bamberg, Allendale, uh, Screven, Jenkins, Emanuel County. That's where we can see over three inches of rainfall. So we're talking flooding, dirt roads, roads washed out, things of that nature. Some gusty winds can't be ruled out either, which can lead to a few power outages. So make sure you definitely keep it here for those weather updates the rest of the week. We'll have much more on this coming up in the full forecast. But let's get a quick update now on your first alert traffic. And now, First alert track. All right, a live look outside of our building here, I-20 Riverwatch Parkway. It doesn't look like traffic's really impacted too much uh, out there at the moment. It looks like things are moving okay, and right now we have sunshine overhead, but there's going to be the opportunity maybe for a passing storm later this evening. Going out to exit 190, Gateway to Grovetown, Lewiston Road, not too bad at the moment there over the overpass and just the usual backup of traffic off the exit. Much more on Edalia coming up in that full forecast in just a bit. Thanks, Riley. So all of all of this is a, it's a big concern here along Florida's Gulf Coast. The last hurricane season brought a lot of destruction their way, giving you a live look at Naples, Florida, cur courtesy of EarthCam. And while things are calm now, it's one of the many areas in Florida in Idalia's path, as Christian Benavidez reports. Automatic sandbagging machines are running around the clock in Tampa, Florida. All along Florida's Gulf Coast, hurricane watches are up as Idalia nears. So we're prepping and hoping for the best. Life-threatening storm surge and hurricane force winds could arrive as early as Tuesday, and the storm's predicted to make landfall Wednesday north of Tampa. Uh, but anything that wobbles uh, with this storm could, could change that. So pretty much anybody on the west coast of Florida, I mean, you can see major, major impact. The U.S. Coast Guard is preparing helicopters for search and rescue missions, and the National Guard has been mobilized. Evacuations have begun in low-lying areas north of Tampa, and more evacuations are expected. Officials are urging residents to keep their vehicle gas tanks at least half full. But there are concerns of a potential fuel contamination here in Florida. Sitco officials say that at least 29 gas stations, diesel fuel was found mixed into regular gasoline, which can cause cars to malfunction. Officials blame human error at the port of Tampa. We're working with DEM to get those um, fuels evacuated and replaced with clean fuel. Idalia comes less than a year after Hurricane Ian, which killed 150 people and caused widespread destruction. Many in Florida's Fort Myers Beach are still living in trailers. Please do not stay in the trailers. They're not safe to stay in. Even with a minor surge, they could float. Forecasters say Idalia could become a Category 3 storm as it strengthens in the Gulf of Mexico Tuesday. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Tampa, Florida. And President Biden spoke with Governor DeSantis and approved an emergency declaration for Florida, according to the White House. Tampa International Airport will suspend all operations beginning at midnight. And when we discuss these tropical systems, you often see the cone of uncertainty issued by the National Hurricane Center. First Alert meteorologist Emily Acton is live with us now explaining what this cone actually tells us. Emily. Well, the cone can be misleading for several reasons. The 
most common one is most people think that the cone is the actual size and direct path of the storm. Now, this is just where these spaghetti models, that's exactly what it's called, uh, just different model runs. There's roughly 10 to 15 that will go through and that's where we kind of outline that cone there based off of where those models are on average. Of course, we have a couple that are a little bit inside and outside the cone, but this is not the actual size of the hurricane. This is just saying within this cone, that's where the center of the hurricane will go. So impacts can be seen well outside of the cone. So that's something uh, that is often misleading about a 60 or 70 percent chance of it being the eye in the center of the storm will be within that cone so relatively accurate but the smaller the cone is that's whenever we are more certain higher confidence there and that's kind of when you see as we go out to closer to day five that's when the cone gets a little bit bigger there but nonetheless just remember you can still see impacts outside of that uh, cone of uncertainty and something we'll be keeping our eyes on. Thanks for that, Emily. Governor Brian Kemp has directed the Georgia EMA and Homeland Security to activate the state's operations center to monitor and prepare for any impact caused by the storm. The federal government is also coordinating with Georgia and South Carolina to provide support. Well, the search is underway for a suspect at UNC Chapel Hill today after shots are fired on campus. In the last hour, the university did give, all, give the all clear. The university police department released this photo of a man who they are calling a person of interest. Around 1 this afternoon, the campus sent out an emergency message telling everybody on campus to shelter in place for an active threat situation. At this time, no word yet on whether anybody was shot or injured. The lockdown was ended just after 4.15. It was terrifying because, you know, you see that on your phone and you think it's just one of those things, you know, you, you don't really know what to think about it. And then you see what the response is and you start to realize just how serious the situation is. And you start hearing rumors from other people and you just don't know what to what to think. And of course, we are continuing to work to find out if there are any injuries in this shooting. This is a developing story and we'll keep you updated as we learn more. A North Augusta council member and Mayor Pro Tem has been arrested and charged with driving under the influence. Records show Councilwoman Jennifer McCauley was arrested Friday. In a statement, she tells us she was at Look Away in Friday night, and when she drove away, she forgot to turn on her headlights. She says as she pulled into her driveway, an officer approached her and accused her of DUI. McCauley goes on to say this matter will be resolved in a courtroom and is asking for privacy. To politics now, and we've been hearing a lot from the Republican president. Politics now, and we've been hearing a lot from the Republican presidential candidates. Now, a Democratic contender, Marion Williamson, is explaining her platform. Williamson made a stop in Aiken today to share her goals. Our Taylor Martin was there, and she joins us live now in the newsroom with some key takeaways. Taylor. Marion Williamson's big issues range from animal protection to climate action to gun safety. Williamson says her focus today is on making the country better for working class Americans and getting back to the American dream. On the 60 year anniversary of Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, she used the speech as a reminder of how far America has come and how far it has to go. Before she took questions from the audience, she spoke on topics like universal health care, student loan debt, and minimum wage, reminding the audience of where she stands on this, these issues and how she, she says she'll work to fix them if elected. What's radical is over a trillion dollars of college loan debt when those college loans should never even existed. What's radical is 600,000 people who are homeless. What's radical is the fact that the majority of Americans report living with constant chronic economic anxiety. That's what's radical. My positions are actually moderate in every other advanced democracy. And all new at News 12 at 6 o'clock, we're hearing more from Marianne Williamson on her goals if she were to get the presidency. Taylor Martin live in our newsroom and Williamson is facing President Joe Biden, who's seeking re-election, along with lawyer and author Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Thanks, uh, Taylor. Well, the search continues for a suspect in the shooting death of a 19-year-old in Rennes. Kia Shields was found shot in a home Saturday morning on Washington Street. Deputies say Shields died at the hospital. Now her mother is making a plea for people to put down the guns and end this senseless violence. Her mom says nothing like this has happened in her neighborhood. She's called home for more than 40 years, and she hopes it doesn't happen to anybody else. Put the guns out. 
put the guns down. We have to come as one and as a community and stop this gun violence because it's getting out of hand, especially for Jefferson County. This is the only the second shooting death for Renz this year. The first was back in June after a store clerk at the Renz Food Mart was killed during an armed robbery. In that case, two people were arrested and charged with murder, armed robbery, and more. A disturbing act of violence in Florida over the weekend, another racist attack in America. The FBI is investigating the deadly shooting at a Dollar General in Jacksonville on Saturday as a hate crime. Surveillance video captures 21-year-old Ryan Palmetter walking up to the store and taking aim at his first victim in the parking lot. Investigators say he wore a face covering, latex gloves, and a bulletproof vest under his shirt. He had two firearms, including an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle covered with swastikas. One of the victims leaves behind a four-year-old daughter. How do you even begin to explain to her what happened? We haven't. You haven't? She doesn't know yet. Oh, I'm so sorry. We're trying to figure out the words to tell her because she was a daddy's girl. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis announced Edward Waters University is getting a million dollars to increase security, while family members of the shooting victims are getting $100,000. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help finding this missing 13-year-old. They say Carlos Daniels Jr. was last seen Sunday afternoon on Jonathan Circle. Investigators tell us he was riding a bike in the area wearing a white shirt and red shorts. If you have any information, call the Sheriff's Office. A tempo by Hilton Hotel that was supposed to be built in downtown Evans is a no-go. They said the goal was to give people more options to eat and visit and make Columbia County more of a destination spot. An investor with the project tells us there was a fallout in talks with the county around the 15th of this month. We've reached out to the Columbia County Development Authority to find out what happened and what's next for that area. Riley? Well, we are keeping a close eye on Edalia. That's going to be heading our way, bringing us uh, the potential force of flash flooding. I imagine that's going to be our biggest impact. We'll take a full look at it coming up in that full forecast. Injured in a wreck? Call me right now. Make this the summer event in Waynesboro. 2.9% financing available. New Ram Bighorns and Laramies. 2.9% APR. Up to 72 months. Good to go. I'm a Trony TV. Big city selection with hometown prices. Plus, every pre-owned vehicle is backed by J.D. Power's Platinum Warranty. Choose the exact vehicle you want and we'll deliver it within 500 miles. Take a short drive on Highway 25 to save time and money. With some amazing video from space here, you can see an impressive lightning-packed collective burst with Idalia. It's a beautiful view from space and a lot different from being under something like this on the ground. Crazy video there as we check in with First Alert Chief Meteorologist Riley Hale. Riley, all eyes are on the tropic as Idalia makes its way towards the Florida coast. Yeah, well, very impressive satellite view there, and you can really see that just seeing some really robust thunderstorms develop along the eye of this storm. So we actually do have a center with the Dahlia that's helping self-organize a little bit better today, and further organization is going to continue tomorrow. Actually, rapid strengthening is in the forecast with the Dahlia heading into tomorrow. Right now, it is a tropical storm, but we only need it to increase its wind speeds another three, five miles an hour, and then we're talking about a Category 1 hurricane. So it's close, and I would imagine the evening updates that do come out later tonight will show that it has become at least a cap one now the latest guidance from the national hurricane center does show this becoming a category three so that's a major hurricane as it does get over those very warm ocean waters over the gulf of mexico making landfall along that gulf coast of florida early wednesday morning showing up closer to us as we head later into our wednesday afternoon wednesday night and then by thursday morning this storm's uh, generally out of here we should see a, a big improvement with our weather once we uh, get throughout the day on thursday here Here's a look at our flash flood risk moving forward this week. So this is going to be our biggest concern. Remember, whenever these storms make a close pass to the CS or if they're really strong, sometimes we can see some wind, but just not expecting a huge wind risk for us here around Augusta from this. But there definitely will be some heavy rain, not only as Edalia starts to get closer towards us Wednesday, but even tomorrow, we have a stall front on top of us. So we have continued rain changes this evening, tonight, throughout the day on Tuesday. So any rain that just kind of piles up before this storm arrives is just going to kind of amplify that flash flood risk across the area. Right now, our southern and eastern counties are the only ones we're including in a first alert, so that's when we're, we're expecting the most significant impacts from this storm. Uh, Swainsboro, Millen, Sylvania, Allendale, Bamberg, 
That's where those rain totals could potentially get close to three, five, maybe even more than that uh, inches of rainfall. Some gusty winds, since you'll be a little bit closer to the center of this storm in those southern counties, maybe some 40, 50 mile per hour gusts can't be ruled out, which could lead to some trees coming down and also knocking out power. Now, comparing a couple of our different forecast models, so this is our European global model, more of a large scale, long term model, but we also have our in house graph model here by IBM. This is a more short term, higher resolution model. You can see the general resolution of both of these is to kind of keep those higher rain totals in the southeastern CS array. The European has it anywhere from, say, two to four inches. Now, our higher resolution models, these do a little bit better in convective environments and kind of can materialize those really intense rainfall rates and totals. So that's showing potentially close to six plus inches of rainfall in a few of our southern counties. So definitely enough to wash out roads, cause significant impacts. Probably going to see schools close there in the southern CS yesterday on Wednesday, so make sure you're staying very up-to-date with the forecast because we know these things can change. Just subtle movements can play a big difference in our forecast. This is what our in-house model is showing here at the moment. So through this evening, if you're stepping out, I don't want to forget about these. A few scattered showers and storms will be possible. Tuesday, really at any point during the day, you'll see a passing shower or storm. And then Wednesday, this is when the main event does show up. So we are going to see some heavy rain from this, some wind at times. And then as we get to closer to sunset, this is passing off towards our east. So pretty busy this week, at least for the next couple of days. But once we get past the daily of Wednesday, take a look at the rest of the week. We're seeing morning temperatures in the low 60s so we got to battle this storm but late to the week we will be rewarded thanks riley a minnesota hair salon is offering a safe space for a little girl experiencing hair loss the six year old six year old has a medical condition where the immune system attacks her hair follicles as jana shortall reports not only is the salon experience giving kira a boost of confidence so is the support of her identical twin sister they're the closest of confidants not just sisters but identical twins Mirror images, except well, one of them is having hair loss and the other one isn't. Six-year-old Kira Johnson is living with alopecia universalis, a condition that causes complete hair loss. And in simple terms, for kids Kira's age, it's not contagious, and my body just thinks that my hair follicles are germs. So you can imagine what it could be like when sister Ava needs to get a haircut. But the reality is, Kira gets as much attention as her sister. And she just always made sure to make sure that they both felt special, that the lives are for everyone. It's thanks to the stylist at Studio Alice in Roseville, led by owner Jamie Wickard. So they've been in lots of times to get some beauty services done. It's been a lot of fun watching them grow and watching them love on each other. They're really cute and close and they're really supportive of each other. Since age two, Kira's stylist Becky Lynn has treated the little girl to scalp massages, washes, and braiding even when Kira had very little hair. So she braided it all up for her, even though the, you could count the hairs, it was so tiny. Now the studio helps style Kira's wig and apply lashes as well. Wig arrival day was huge. She's hugging the box, she's hugging the products. She was very excited, she was beaming. And last year, when it was time for back to school haircuts, Ava decided to shave her head in support of her sister. The stylist made the experience special. And everyone was so empowering, and this gives me feels, but they were just so proud of looking like each other and just to have a whole group of women in a salon making you feel like you can do anything you want. You don't have to look a certain way and to have two ball kids going to a brand new school is really intimidating and just feels so supported by this community. Thanks to Kira, the studio found its cause and is working to make a difference for families. Your beauty is really empowering. Now, whether you have hair or you don't have hair, it's just really important that everyone feels included in it there's confidence and beauty. And next month, the salon will host an event to raise money for the Walk for Alopecia. They will also be cutting hair to donate to wigs for kids. A great cause there. Well, Amazon shoppers, this one's for you. If you're looking to save cash while you're on the site, patience may be the key to saving some cash. We explain coming up next. We have a hot tip for you if you're looking to save money shopping online. Leave that item you want to buy in your online cart and just walk away. Rachel Tapampa explains how that little trick could pay off. This is a fun one, a sneaky little trick to get a better deal. Okay, listen up. When you're shopping online, abandon your cart. Press pause before you purchase. I mean, 
put the item you want to buy in your online shopping cart and then just close out that browser and wait. If you signed up for emails with that particular retailer, usually within 24 to 48 hours, you'll get an email in your inbox. It usually says, we noticed you left something in your cart or we noticed you are looking at an item. Sometimes that email will include a 10% or 15% coupon. Sometimes you'll get an email days later telling you that item is on sale. Also, if you have an Amazon Alexa and leave items sitting in your online Amazon cart, you will get an alert on Alexa when any of those items in your shopping cart go on sale. Just a little trick that sometimes works so you get the best deal. With this watch in your wallet, I'm Rachel DePompa. All right, remember with this uh, tropical system heading our way, our main impact is going to be flooding rainfall, but we could see some strong wind gusts, but right now we have a less than 30% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds here anywhere in the CS array. So remember, a big rain event with this system heading our way. Now look at it just after the break. All right, remember, if you are heading out this afternoon, we're still pretty hot out there, 93 degrees, feeling like 100. We are dry right now in Augusta, but cannot roll out a few showers and storms uh, pushing in along the sea breeze front. So that's going to be heading our way and could bring us a few drops of rainfall later this evening. Remember, tomorrow we do have high rain chances Tuesday, not necessarily associated with the Dahlia. Those are just going to be uh, generic showers and storms, but producing some heavy rain. So that will kind of factor into the heavy rainfall that will additionally head our way as the Dahlia moves through on Wednesday. Stick with us. Much more on the forecast and more news at through the break. George